Getting started with today's tutorial, we're going to be doing the companion piece to the uh, Bridgerton inspiration dress that I put out earlier this week. So as you can see, we have Elwyn here in her dress, which features a tulip sleeve and a little bit of a train attached to the back. Um, I think that dress turned out great. And as I said in the other video, this fabric was just the best find. Um, the pieces for the actual jacket, which is considered a Spencer jacket or a short-waisted jacket, include the front of the jacket, back of the jacket, the sleeve, the cuff, the ruffle at the neck, and then also the band at the jacket where it comes right here at the empire waist. So in order to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the placement for the darts in the front and the back pieces and get those darts sewn over at the sewing machine. To get the correct dart placement, I actually took the pattern piece and poked a hole right at the tip of the dart with my seam ripper. And then using a heat erasable marker, I indicated on the pattern pieces where that uh, dart is supposed to stop and then marked it with a pin. That's just my preferred method of putting in darts. You also want to notice the width of the dart on the pattern, which is going to be a quarter of an inch at both the front and back dart. So let's get those darts sewn and we'll move on to the next step. We're going to press those darts to the side and then we're going to get the front and the back of the bodice sewn together at the shoulder seams. Now that we have the shoulder seams pressed open on the actual jacket bodice, the next thing we're going to do is turn our attention to the actual sleeves. And you'll notice on the pattern piece that there are uh, two dots that you're going to gather at the sleeve cap. And then this is actually the sleeve cuff. And you're going to cut four pieces of this and you're going to sew around the exterior portion of the cuff minus where the armhole is going to go into the sleeve. So let's do those couple of steps now and then we'll move on with the project. We're going to sew the sleeve cuffs together right along that long edge and the two short edges leaving the actual armhole opening edge unsewn. With the cuff sewn, you're going to clip in towards that seam allowance and turn the cuff right side out and give it a press. With the cuffs turned and pressed, we're going to attach them to the sleeve and then get the sleeves attached to the actual jacket armhole openings. When you have the sleeve cuff attached to the actual sleeve, you'll notice that there's going to be a quarter inch of uh, sleeve past the finished edge of each side of the cuff. Thank you. 
Now that we have the cuffs attached, we're going to actually get the sleeves attached to the bodice and sew it to the armhole openings. It looks pretty great so far. What we're going to do next is we're going to sew the front and the back of the jacket together at the side seam. With the side seam sewn, we're going to clip in towards that seam allowance and we're going to turn the jacket right side out and give that side seam a press. So this is how the jacket is finishing so far, and I think it's coming together pretty well. Um, this is how the cuffs are going to finish, just so you know. Uh, we're going to turn those uh, cuff edges up. It's going to leave a split at the inside of the wrist on the cuff. And you can add a little bead there or a little button if you feel like that would make it look nicer. But you will see that the inside edge will be finished with the actual lining of the sleeve. So what we're going to do next is we're going to prepare the collar for the actual jacket. And the, it's just actually a ruffle collar. So we're going to fold this in half. Half, um, with the right sides on the way out and we're going to run a gather stitch along the long edge of the actual ruffled collar. We're going to pull that ruffled collar to match the uh, jacket neck opening and the notches on the front of the pattern as indicated. With the ruffles of the collar evenly distributed across the whole uh, neck edge, we're just going to base that in place. Now that we have the collar in place and everything's looking pretty good, we're going to go ahead and look at the lining pieces. These were constructed off camera utilizing the same steps with the exception of the cuff to the sleeve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it right sides together and then I'm going to sew just up the front uh, right and left openings and leave the uh, waist edge open. Then we're going to baste that together and then get that waist, um, the band for the waist attached there for the jacket.
All right, before you clip in towards that seam allowance, as always, you want to look at both sides of the jacket to make sure that you haven't created any unnecessary tucks or puckers. And I think that that seam is actually looking pretty decent. So that's good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clip in towards the seam allowance, especially around that neck edge, turn the uh, jacket right side out and give it a press. And after we're happy with the results of that, we're going to base together the raw edge of the lining and the actual jacket. All right, I think the look is really turning out exactly as I had hoped. So at this stage, since I'm happy with the construction of everything, we're just gonna run a baste stitch across the bottom edge, uh, attaching the lining to the actual jacket, and then we'll actually get the band sewn to the bottom of the coat, and we are almost finished with the construction. With the lining of the jacket basted at the waist to the jacket, what we're gonna do is just take that waist band or the band that's gonna go around the bottom of the jacket and look at it real quick. Now, because I'm using a super lightweight fabric, in this case, it's just this really lightweight silk, I'm gonna add a little fusible interfacing to one side just to give this a little bit more body. If you're using something that's a little bit uh, firmer or a little bit thicker, you may choose to omit this step, but it's optional at this point. So I'm gonna turn one long edge of the waistband under one quarter inch and give it a press. And then I'm gonna pin the waistband to the jacket with right sides together. Once you have that waistband pinned to the actual jacket, you want to make a note that there's a quarter inch overhang of uh, the waistband past the finished edge of both the left and right front opening of the jacket. So we're going to go ahead and sew that in place now. Once we have that band sewn to the jacket, what we're gonna do is trim a little bit in towards that seam allowance, press that seam up, turn the band to the inside of the jacket and finish the uh, folded edge to the actual waist seam. With the waistband turned up, we're just gonna hand cast over to finish the waistband to the actual inside of the jacket at the lining, and then we're gonna get a quick fit to the doll. Now that we have the waistband complete, the next step is going to be to hand cast the uh, lining of the sleeve to the actual sleeve cuff, and then we'll get that fit to the doll, uh, put a few snaps on, maybe a couple of buttons, and we actually are going to be finished.
Here's the final fitting of the Spencer jacket for the uh, Bridgerton inspiration pattern. As you can see, Elwyn's already wearing the dress that I talked about at the beginning of the video, which is also available in the pattern. Um, I love the way the jacket actually turned out. I think it's very feminine looking. I had wondered whether or not I wanted to create a collar or this ruffled effect at the front, which I think I'm very pleased with how that worked. Uh, let's turn the jacket over and see how it's fitting. And I think everything looks pretty good through the shoulders and through the sleeves. Uh, I like the way that it's hitting at the wrist. So overall, I think the uh, project turned out really successfully. I'm going to add just a couple of embellishments to the front of the jacket, get some final photographs of our doll, and our Bridgen Bridgerton inspired pattern is actually complete. Our Regency era Spencer style jacket is finished and I think Elowen looks really, really lovely. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Please feel free to hit that subscribe and like button. If you're interested in seeing construction of the gown shown in these photographs, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. As always, I thank you guys for your time and appreciate you all very much and I'll see you in the next video.